Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Nathan Simmons, and I'm just an old city cowboy trying not to fall out the saddle. <laughs> there are cum stains all over these sheets. <laughs> and uh, I don't remember how often I used to jerk off, but it was a lot. <laughs> and this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest, or in this case, sexiest endings. Steamiest endings. Steamy. It's so steamy, you're going to have to get some ice to cool off. The most basic endings. <laughs> The most basic endings. Welcome. The feminine endings. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> Just talking about boys and broads today. Mm-hmm. Oh, and speaking of broads, we're joined by one here this week. <laughs> uh, I, that's, I don't know if that's a great intro, but you know what I'm No, that's, that's <laughs> it's significantly less respectful than the last time she was on the show. <laughs> Absolutely. But you know what? This is. Uh, Isn't that usually how it goes for a returning guest? <laughs> sure. You're right. I, I should, with the utmost respect because we needed a female perspective on this episode because I have one burning question. <laughs> Fucking Ashley's here again. Moving on. Yay, Ashley's Ashley. here. Hi, I'm back. Thank you so much <laughs> for being here. You're Thank welcome. Thank you for your service. I will say that. No kidding. You're so welcome. Okay, right off the bat, I gotta ask this question. <laughs> Do it's it. Been burning. It's a burning question. Oh, God. Do you find a 1990s Michael Douglas to be sexy? Absolutely fucking not. Okay. No, all right. like I okay. don't get it at all. Okay. Because this, this man for the late 80s and the early 90s yeah. ruled the fucking school when it came to erotic thrillers. I know. Like, I know. He's so hot that women will murder each other for him. Mm-hmm. It's so fucking stupid. Women will <laughs> boil rabbits alive because of, <laughs> of how good that peen is. I couldn't believe it. No, I was getting my hair cut this week and I was telling my hairdresser that we were covering this movie uh-huh. and she was like, wasn't that weird? Weird that like Michael <laughs> Douglas was like a thing, and I'm like, yeah, that was weird. From his like weird rat, I mean, I'm just gonna slam Michael Douglas, but his weird rat eyes and voice. Yeah. Like, is, damn, he just gives off like used car salesman vibes. <laughs> I would not buy a van from him. No, I feel like if he touched me, there would be like slime residue. Yes, left. this dude is so sweaty. This whole movie. <laughs> this is, uh, I think, this is post facelift. Yeah, mm-hmm. for him, I'm not 100 percent positive, but. I fucking adore erotic thrillers that star Michael Douglas. I don't know why. This movie, (laughs) Fatal Attraction, Disclosure, I could watch these all fucking day. Oh my God, Disclosure. That movie's insane. (laughs) DC, question for you. Sure. The fuck is the matter with you? (laughs) I like having a good time, man. I don't know what to tell you. I like having a good time. It's that thing where it's like... these were running the landscape mm-hmm. in this period of time, and like right before porn came to home video. <laughs> All right. Anyway, <laughs> no, no, sorry. I, I was literally taking a drink of water right as you were saying that. I'm uh-huh. sorry. No, I, I don't, I don't know what it is, but they're so entertaining. They're so goofy and stupid. I just have a blast watching them. Sure. And who could do it better than Paul Verhoeven? Uh, like probably I'm- a few people, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I like an erotic thriller, but this one just didn't do it for me. Okay. Stop letting this man direct car chases. <laughs> oh my gosh, absolutely. <laughs> Hot take. I don't find this movie to be erotic because Not nothing about this movie all. was sexy to me. Same. 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 It's inc- it's so problematic yes. that it I totally get the loss of sex appeal. Yeah. I totally get it. For the fact that everything in this movie is covered in semen, <laughs> right? They d- they just like we're not going to look into the DNA evidence. No. No. The, what, <laughs> no. You could solve the case in a fucking day. Yeah. There is an interview with Joe Esterhaus where he said, like, I forgot that was a thing while uh-huh. I wrote this movie. Of like, course. How do you? Of course. The fuck? <laughs> this has to be some of the shittiest police work in the history of cinema. Yeah. Oh, my God. I This is he's Michael Douglas alone in this movie is maybe the worst detective in a movie I've ever seen. He is the worst. Okay, I do have one question just right up top. Uh-huh. Is this a better movie? if it's Benoit Blanc instead of Michael Douglas. Oh my god. <laughs> like basic instinct, a knives out mystery. He would never do this though. The movie would nearly be as long because he would not be swayed by Sharon Stone or <laughs> Jean- like, right. there would be 
it, there would be no sex scene. So it's like, yeah, no, he she did it right away. <laughs> he would definitely wear that boat neck tee from the discotheque, though. Oh, he sure would. One hundred percent. He sure would. Man, there's so much to talk about. But let me say this. If this is your first time, listener, t- tuning into the podcast, first of all, welcome. Take your pants off. Okay, yeah, get ready. Let's do the position. Jesus. Uh, we are a podcast that tries. We try to watch movies such as Basic Instinct that do not end on a happily ever after Mm -hmm. as much as this movie wants to sell you this is potentially a happily ever after and we try to find the good in those endings hence the name of the show The Silver Lining Uh and Basic Instinct was my choice and I I watched this movie for the first time only a couple years ago Uh I was sick in bed I was you know I took the day off from work (laughs) and I was like I just was scrolling through my my library of movies and I was like I've never seen it you lit some candles Mm -hmm. you put down all your kids photos you turned them away (laughs) cranked up some Inya oh yeah and uh Inya all up Inya I think this movie cured my sickness because (laughs) by the end of the movie I was howling laughing so hard that I was like, you know what? I, I can take the day on. I think I'm okay now. I, man, I had the opposite <laughs> reaction but to I get this it. movie. I totally get it. I just, I turned my brain off. I'm like, I know this is like a campy 90s thing. Yeah. But I don't want to take it serious. And I don't. Uh-huh. I just have fun with it because it's so... It's so goofy. Like, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> I'm 99% sure this was like a late night showtime watch for me. Like, mm, way Skinamax. back. Like, this, th- this sliver, like, <laughs> those kind of, like, uh, Poison Ivy, like, yeah. those got a ton of play mm-hmm. late night. And I didn't remember a single thing about this movie until rewatching it this week. And it was exhausting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, no, again, I'm not I'm defending this movie by any means. Totally. You guys totally feel free to feel how you feel. I just have a blast with it. Oh, no. And I and I will continue to tell you what I think about this movie. Oh, please. <laughs> the, the, uh, the premise of the podcast. I hope so. <laughs> Say what you will. I mean, they got the entire B cast of Seinfeld in this motherfucker. Oh, my God. So. Absolutely. <laughs> they really did. Like four or five Seinfeld cast members Mm -hmm. in this shit it's insane and at least a couple of actors from halloween (laughs) and like half the cast of jurassic park yeah i i I just i i like paul verhoeven i like yon de bond who's behind the camera on this one and i don't know i just i have fun with it i i i don't know i wouldn't say i like the director okay that's fair (laughs) he made starship troopers and that's fucking dope he also made robocop RoboCop, of course when yon de bond's name popped up i leaned over to ashley and said i bet this is why dustin picked this you know it's like his favorite movie (laughs) You fucking know it. (laughs) But, uh, okay, so we we got our general thoughts out there. Was this a first time watch for you, Ashley? Yeah. um, Oh, boy. So all I knew about this, (laughs) all I knew was, you know, the the vagina flash incident. Of course, of course. That's all I knew. And I get it mixed up with... Fatal Attraction. That is that is a totally... I, I get those mixed up to some scenes from both movies. I'm like, did that happen? In the, no, that's Fatal Attraction. Right. Yeah. So I... I, I And I then once Nathan said we were going to watch it, I, I purposely didn't like look anything up. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I was... I didn't know what to expect, but it wasn't... It, it wasn't this. <laughs> I will say, I, like, on the first watch, I was like shocked. I was like, I cannot believe this got a theatrical release. I uh-huh. can't believe it was only rated R because of all the graphic nudity and violence and everything. And I can't believe how popular it was this was the fourth highest grossing movie of 1992 like there's no plot to this movie yeah right it it lost to aladdin yeah aladdin the bodyguard and home alone 2 are the only movies that made more money than this movie in 1992 insane it was very popular yeah insane so wait this this made more money than batman returns yes (laughs) i I think i could surmise from from your 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 notes here that you did not particularly enjoy this movie either (laughs) oh no no i I didn't really uh that's fine (laughs) I, I, the plot sort of comes down to like, you know what's scary? A woman who likes sex and other women. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine this a broad that likes to do it? Yeah. She must be crazy. Yeah. It's- that, that, the, the whole villain of the movie. Yeah. That's, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. <laughs> like, what's the most evil thing on the planet? Bisexuals. <laughs> Do not isolate that sound. <laughs> <laughs> the Nick character was originally written as bisexual, and Michael Douglas said, "Like, I'm not going to do that." Right? Mm-hmm. The masculinity is so fragile. It, it is. It's. It. It almost has like a throwback James Bond feel of like, yeah, this woman, I, I could fuck this woman in submission. Uh-huh. Like that's basically I what it fix feels. Her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's so. It's so weird. It's so weird. Yeah. But I get the appeal of like, and you know, the eighties were all camp for the most part, and it's like. 
why don't we get back to like some quote unquote adult movies, right? And no. people were starved for that. Right. And so, I mean, Fatal Attraction was a big hit. Why not make another sexy Michael Douglas movie? There's an interview with Michael Douglas. There's a few where he essentially says like, you know, the reason he did this movie was because he was worried that sex scenes were becoming passe because of the AIDS epidemic. Sure. And he was trying to save quote unquote hot pictures. And I'm like, what a, what a hero. Right? God like, bless <laughs> Michael Douglas for his work. I'll fall on this dick shaped sword. <laughs> How do we beat AIDS? I should fuck someone on camera. <laughs> right. And, I, I did see something that said, like, when he was cast and, like, he, he was brought on board, mm-hmm. he was like, I, I want to say so in Who Gets... To, to play the Sharon Stone character because if this movie goes down, I'm not going down alone. Right. He wanted an A-list actor. He was like, I need someone else that will take the blame. Right. So they offered it to everyone. <laughs> Listen to this list of people that were offered the role of Catherine. Uh-huh. Kim Basinger, Julia Roberts. Oh, can you fucking imagine? <laughs> I could not. Meg Ryan. Wow. Oh, oh, my God. Michelle Pfeiffer, who I think could do it. To- she totally could do 100% it. 100% could do it. Gina Davis. <laughs> Kathleen Turner. Mm. Wow. Kelly Lynch. Ellen Barkin, <laughs> Mario Hemingway, and it, it, the list just keeps going. And it's just like... And Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> Ernest Hemingway, of course, her husband. Um, no, and the list just keeps going. And Sharon Stone was brought on because Paul Verhoeven worked with her on Total Recall yeah. and was like, why don't we let her do it? This was like her big breakout thing, really. Sure. And I'll be damned. Like, I, as much as the movie is just like, it's, you know, trying to be this prestigious thing, it's not. Like, right. But Sharon Stone... It's so good in this movie to me. Like, oh, I, she is fantastic, incredible. Oh, oh. I, I disagree. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I disagree as well. I don't think anyone in this movie is good. Uh, <laughs> fuck you. Wayne Knight is putting in fucking work. <laughs> sure, that man gets roles because he can sweat on command. Oof. I think Roger Ebert summed up this performance better than anybody ever when he wrote in his review for Basic Instinct Two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he said the Catherine Trammell role cannot be played well. But Sharon Stone can play it badly better than any other actress alive. Sure. <laughs> I, I, al- I almost agree with that. Yeah. I would agree with that. Like, I don't think I didn't like her performance because of her. I sure. think there's that character has nothing other than being sexy. Like, yeah. that's the extent of the character. She's a writer. <laughs> it's, that <weird. laughs> it's that weird Joe Esterhouse thing where. According to him, his all of the sex scenes were meant to be shot like in shadow and tastefully, and Verhoeven was just like, "No, I'm going to show everything." <laughs> yeah, and like <laughs> he's, and it's the same thing with Showgirls, where it's just like, in what world is there a script? This script creates a movie that is like an art film. Right? It's just insane to me. Although I will say Showgirls at least leans into the awful camp of it way yeah. more. Yeah, yeah this yeah, movie yeah. took itself way more seriously than Showgirls. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, that's that's my thing about Sharon Stone, though. Like, I think she doesn't... Ne- I don't think anybody in this movie is aware enough to realize, like, how ridiculous this movie is. Like, they, they are playing it straight. Yes. Right. But I think Sharon Stone, you're right, that character... All she really seems to have is her ability to manipulate things because of her sex appeal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I think that's an interesting, like, thing for, like, because normally that would be reserved for a male role, right? Yeah. And, like, it's just, I don't know. I like seeing the tables turn. I like that she's bisexual because it just, it expands that even further. I don't know. I, I like that character. But then the movie, the movie treats that as, like, a sign of, like, deviancy, right? Oh, like, sure. of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. At the end of the movie, he literally he yells at Roxy, like, I heard what happened to your husband. Are you still into girls? Yeah. Like, as though that's, like, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. That's the smoking gun that I, the smoking vagina I've been after. Oh, like, of course. <laughs> and the sex, the sex scenes in this movie, like, the oh opening God. one, God. and I know, we're, I know we're getting early, but the opening one feels <laughs> Finishing early. I'm just <laughs> I'm just watching it and uh, uh hold on actually you know what you deserve that and uh, hey. I I'm just watching I'm like I've seen Nymphomaniac where <laughs> it was actual sex on camera right and this still feels more real and graphic than sure. that <laughs> it's like, not for lack of trying uh Verhoeven wanted to show Michael Douglas's erect penis in this movie mm-hmm. and Douglas was like I you get my ass so you get nothing yeah fair <laughs> enough it is such a weird like we can we could show everything we could show a woman's butthole basically but you show an erect penis and it's like whoa 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 too far like the, dude the fucking sex scenes are like you take like Lloyd's fantasy from Dumb and Dumber 
<laughs> and mix it with the sex scene from Showgirls, uh-huh. it's, and that's this movie. Yeah. No, it is. It like they must have had the same int- intimacy coordinator from Showgirls, right? Like sure. the, the wild arm flailing. It's basically the dry version of the pool sex scene from Showgirls. Sure. Yeah. Lots of flailing. Is this? Uh, I I want to say is this our quote unquote sexiest movie of the season, or does that go to 365 days? What do you guys? Think? Honestly, like there, I got big 365 days. <laughs> big Massimo energy from Nick uh-huh. in this movie. Uh-huh. 365 instincts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, talk about uh, the creation and the release of Basic Instinct. I'm good. <laughs> also, you can't ask that question when we did a movie where Michelle Pfeiffer is in a vinyl cat suit You're this right. season. <laughs> this is a, I think it's a very sexy movie this season. So I, sorry. Well, we'll see. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that that's true. The year is 1992, as we mentioned. Uh, the director is Paul Verhoeven. The movie stars Michael Douglas and Sharon Stone. And that's it, according to Roger Ebert, because that's all he lists on his review. <laughs> sure. The budget was $49 million, what? which is astronomical in 1992. <laughs> yeah. And it managed to gross $353. <laughs> that's it, $353. $353 million worldwide. $353, this dollar. <laughs> it currently sits at a 56% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I, I will say is fair. I think that's pretty I think fair. That's fair. It was nominated for Best Editing uh, and Best Original Score uh, Why? at the Oscars. I don't know. The score is not terrible. No, the score, I, the is, score great. is good. It's pretty good. Like, this score walked so, like, Nathan Johnson's Knives Out score could run. Sure, sure. sure. Uh, it was, as uh, we were talking about off, uh, off mic, it was also nominated for Worst Actor for Michael Douglas, Worst Supporting Actress for Gene Triplehorn, and Worst New Star for Sharon Stone. <laughs> We gotta move past the Razzies. Yeah. I mean, they get it. <laughs> they get it right sometimes, but like, it's just never. It never feels good to cite the Razzies. That's fair. I, I just if we're talking about a movie, but like, you're totally right. Yeah, yeah. I was just, if we're talking about a movie like this, where it's like. And no one's going to be offended if you talk shit about Basic Instinct. I, I think <laughs> I think all three of these actors uh, can brush this off their shoulders totally. because they're laughing on our face while running to the bank with all the fucking money they made off of this thing. So sure. I think they can handle it. Totally. But yeah, I, like like the thing that happened recently with the eleven year old that got nominated uh, for it. I'm like, yeah, I think I think we can. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a bit much. <laughs> Just so awful. <laughs> that's that's too much. Yeah. Didn't it feel good to see the Carolco logo in front of this movie? Oh my god, <laughs> I got so oh hot. No, nothing felt good. <laughs> That was the last time I was titillated when it popped up at the beginning. I was like, oh, Rambo. Okay, let's go. <laughs> All right. Well, let's. I, I'm curious to see how they even bothered with a trailer. I think they're just going to dive into all the action yeah. and keep this. I'm going to I'm gonna make a bet they keep the sex appeal to a minimum. Yeah, I'm very bi curious about this trailer. Oh, God damn good, it. Good one. Good. Thanks, man. <laughs> let's get into the trailer. Well, there's your logo right there. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> oh. So you were wrong immediately. Is this the start of the white flashes? We need that Texas Chainsaw Massacre sound. Uh-huh. Right. Ooh, the sexy music. I wanted to write a book about the murder of a retired rock and roll star. You know how she does the boyfriend? The nice pick. She intended the book to be I just, how the fuck are we supposed to ever think it was anybody else when we see Sharon Stone in the first scene do it? Right. Of course, of course. What is this, Columbo? <laughs> I think they were hoping, because, like, in standard definition at home, you won't be able to tell. Sure. <laughs> There's no DNA evidence. Swab one thing. <laughs> you literally show us all the cum that's on the sheets. <laughs> I, got a, I got a note about that line. Holy shit. She knew that nobody would buy it. Oh my gosh, the aggressive dancing in this scene. Oh my god, the fucking dancing. <laughs> like her trying to keep an eye on Sharon Stone while also dancing. Oh, it's it's the funniest part of the movie. I could not stop laughing. Nikki liked it. Beyond desire. Is something beyond control? What? <laughs> is something also beyond? <laughs> These red slashes are killing me. It feels like it should be a horror movie trope. Uh huh. It's amazing how he just transforms into a fucking stuffed dummy when he gets hit by the car, though. Oh like, my that's, god! What? What a safety feature! I love that shot. Oh, I love that shot so much. It's an insane shot. <laughs> this is some Fast and Furious music, like when they go to race wars. <laughs> <laughs> Base wars. <laughs> Basic wars. <laughs> I will say her hair is like immaculate through the whole thing. Sure. 
Alternate title, Fast and Curious. Hey! <laughs> hey, I like that. You know what? We need to replace the rim shot with the Seinfeld music. Yeah, I like that idea. <laughs> uh, okay, so there's so much to ha- talk about with this movie, but first... But also not much. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I want to talk about the, when they were filming it, though. Yeah, yeah. I was doing a little bit of research. Uh, this movie, of course, filmed on, on location in San Francisco, and uh, I guess word had got around town about what the movie was essentially about uh-huh. and it with the main uh quote-unquote villain of the movie sharon stone being uh uh bisexual mm-hmm. uh in the way that she was gonna be the villain of the movie uh, a lot of gay and lesbian rights activists uh were constantly protesting the shooting of this movie like yeah. on set like on location out there with their picket signs and everything it got to the point where the San Francisco Police Department sent their riot team oh, wow. to the shoot. And SFPD famously never overreacts to anything. <laughs> Nothing, not at all. Uh, and producer Alan Marshall would handpick out each protester in the crowd that he wanted arrested. Wow. Isn't that not crazy? Wow. Like, it's so- Didn't the protesters ended up actually doing like a citizen's arrest mm-hmm. for Marshall? Because they were like, like, fuck off. Yes. Like, what is your problem? Yes. <laughs> crazy. So, I mean, like this movie is definitely got a lot of problems with it especially with today's sensibilities but yeah. even then people kind of realize like hey this is it's probably not a good for our image to have <laughs> You know, sec- like LGBT people have all- always been, uh, you know, misaligned with thrillers and horror movies. Sure. And it's probably not a good idea to keep that facade going. Sure. I mean, it obviously didn't work because this movie was a huge hit, but it, I, just the fact that he was down there on the streets while they were filming, like, yeah, I want that one arrested. Ugh. It's like, Jesus Christ. That's insane. Yeah, that's wild. It rolls right into nicely with the grossness of this movie. <laughs> sure. Ashley pointed out a thing where it just felt like every scene with Sharon Stone and Roxy were was written like that meme where it's like men writing women. She breasted boobily down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, like every scene with them was like a 13-year-old boy was writing it. Like, yeah, and then they touch each other's boobs. Yeah. When I was watching this movie, I was like, why is, does this movie not resonate with the same people that would like put up like Scarface posters? Like this, this <laughs> goes sure. right aligned with that same kind of personality. I don't, I don't know. This one doesn't get as much love for some reason. So these very, these opening credits I thought were so boring, but Nathan, you you might have recognized this. Did it look like this was inside the gym of the Wishmaster? <laughs> it did. It looked like that, but it also looked like when you're watching like a scrambled adult channel. Like, yes. Like, in the 90s. Oh my god, like, yeah. I was like they're already trying to like censor this. <laughs> I, I, god, that's that's a that's a thing that'll never happen again, right? Ever. The, the scrambled no. TV. Uh I got to say, I think the mirror on the ceiling is maybe the ultimate douchebag, like, <laughs> uh, feng shui, furniture, interior decorating move, right? Like, is there anything worse than a mirror on the ceiling? I mean... Mirror on the floor? <laughs> oh, wow. You're taking it a whole other level. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know how that would work. Mirrors everywhere. Mirrors, 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 mirrors everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> the house from 13 Ghosts. Oh, God. That, could you imagine this movie set in that house? <laughs> Ooh. That'd be good. So, so, we start the movie, and it's... Clearly, Sharon's told having sex with this guy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Although they put the hair in front of her face, so you don't know who it could be. Hmm. Yeah, because Johnny Boz had a uh, cousin it fetish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and before he even gets stabbed, mm-hmm. the sound he makes when he's climaxing sounds like he's already being stabbed. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> 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 it was, uh, actually, how do you feel about this opening scene? <laughs> Um, it was a lot. I think we laughed a lot through this opening scene. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. Like it's like it's that uh, it's that flailing from the um, swimming pool scene from Showgirls. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's but it's like that's how that's how the movie starts. <laughs> You're starting with that, and yeah, I, I guess I watched the unrated uh, version because uh-huh. I never seen it before. But the ice pick going through this guy's nose. Yeah. Oh my god, it's, insane! It looks uh, it's really well done. I the the makeup effects and the the visual effects and everything I thought were really good in this scene. I'm sorry. All right. That's Rob Bottin who did The Thing mm-hmm. and RoboCop and Total Recall. So, like, Holy yeah, shit. That, it it's really good. Like, when his name popped up in the opening credits, I was like, D- does Michael Douglas's head separate from his body oh. at some point in this movie? Oh, like- oh that'd be fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, if it was revealed at the end that Sharon Stone was a thing, like when she goes to roll <laughs> sure. over to get the ice pick and <gasps> she comes back. Yeah. Better movie. Better movie. Much better movie. Yeah. So she brutally stabs this guy to death with an ice pig. This death is gruesome. And like, she's still writing him yep. while she does it. Yep. Like, she doesn't stop. Yep. <laughs> like, that, the fucking scene from Gone Girl has nothing on this. Right. <laughs> right. It, yeah, that's actually true. I, that's actually a good point. Like, Gone Girl is a way you could do, like, a, a very, like, sexualized woman. Like, she knows how to use her sex 
to to get the things she wants, but is a much more complex character. It's also not the only thing about the character. Yes. Right. right. Like, yeah. Yes. And and she's also a writer. Holy shit, Gone Girl is a spiritual successor to Basic Kids Day. Huh. <laughs> I mean, how, how, now how do we trace this to Halloween 6? There even you go. On three years later. Yeah. Aside from one actor in this movie. How you get to Rise of Skywalker 2 from this? What kind of peanut butter you think Michael Douglas eats? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he eats it. I think he just smears it all over himself. He That's does. how he gets that greasy shine to him. <laughs> He puts it in his hair. Yeah. <laughs> and then these cops come in and they are immediately the most early 90s cops of all time. The broiest bros of police officers. Yeah. He, he got off before he got off. And then they all chuckle like, holy shit, this dude. <laughs> then they all put on sunglasses and then fucking cue the who. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they they sashay out of the room together to call a like this. What a eulogy this guy just had! Uh-huh. Like if that was me in the afterlife, I'd be haunting these guys for the rest of my life. Holy shit! There's cum stains all over the sheets. God. Do not swab them though. No, nope. right. DNA doesn't exist in this movie. We won't learn anything from this. Why would you? And then these cubs think that there's no way the maid could have done it because she's overweight. That's did you guys so hear this line? Yeah. yeah. It's so great. Like these are the In w- their defense, the maid didn't do it. Well, she didn't. That's that's a good point, I guess. But like, I don't know if Michael Douglas is more of a terrible cop and a terrible person in this movie or Black Rain. I find it hard to figure out where the line is. I actually haven't seen Black Rain uh-huh. and I just started looking stuff up about it today because it, people kept making comparisons between those these two movies. If you said Black Rain was a sequel to this movie, I would 100% believe it because he <laughs> acts ex- oh he's exactly the same in that movie. Like, oh. Just just an asshole. Gross. Just, ter- just a terrible asshole. I would venture to say he's he's. this is like his character in a lot of those movies, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he was basically the same character in Fatal uh, Attraction. Yes, I was going to say if he was a cop in Fatal Attraction, it would be the trilogy. Like. The same thing, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> there is nothing redeeming about Nick. No, no. There, there's barely anything redeemable about any of these characters, no. honestly. I was going to say, I didn't like any of the characters. No. <laughs> Gus is the only guy that I like want to hang out with. Yes, Gus is the only one that that has like doesn't have his drunk cum goggles on. <laughs> He's the only one. He, he just wants to chill at the cowboy bar. Yeah. yeah. No woman can be introduced in a scene in this movie without... Breasting boobily down the stairs. Yes! There's these sweeping glamour shots. Yep. They all get that except Jean Triplehorn. Right. And and she's a bombshell in this movie. But I know, like, but everyone's just like, ooh, she wears beige. Ugh, she's got stockings on? What an uggo. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Every woman is a bombshell in this movie, and I get that that's the point, but like they treat her like she... That's what I said to Nathan. I was like, this movie, the casting is so unfair uh-huh. because all the women are so much more... Who is eating the loudest <laughs> I'm trying to get this fucking bag of chips open. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Ashley. What were you saying? No, I was just saying, like, all the women in this movie are, like, <laughs> 10,000 times more attractive yes. than any of the men. I have not eaten lunch yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy to me that this movie treats G Triple Horn like she's not a 10 out of 10. It's, right. like, it's like how we did Marissa Tomei and The Wrestler. Uh-huh. It's like, what are we talking about? <laughs> and honestly, I'd say her performance is better than Sharon Stone's, yeah. in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. No, I think she's good, too. Uh, no doubt. I think she's good, too. I think... I don't know. Michael Douglas plays the asshole well, but uh-huh. it's like this. I don't blame his performance. I just think the character is just written terribly, right. like underwritten and overwritten somehow at the same time. Like, I don't know. It, it's way too big. He's the worst detective I think I've ever seen in a movie. Uh-huh. He doesn't even have to say or do anything, but just the look he gives every woman in this movie is so inappropriate. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, he doesn't say a word when he sees Sharon Stone the first time, and already I'm like, dude, you need to, you, you gotta be put on leave. Close your mouth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look away. He's so gross. Like he watches her change. Yes. Like he watches her undress. Yep. Like, ugh. Yeah. Like what a creep. Yeah. And the first scene with Roxy, I mean, it's like you're saying, it only exists to introduce Roxy, right? Mm-hmm. Like, right. She walks down the stairs, and they're like, "Why do you think he's dead?" And she's like, "You wouldn't be here otherwise." I'm like, "There's plenty other reasons yeah. why a cop might show up." Yeah. Uh, you you frequently do. A lot of cocaine, and I feel I feel like Roxy is is meant to be a red herring uh-huh. about like who killed Johnny Bob, but like a blonde herring. But her hair looks nothing like the woman from the first scene. Like no. it's much more of a dirty blonde than a than the blondest blonde that the woman in the opening scene was. Sure, I don't know. It's weird that they 
they, that little mistake <laughs> got overlooked. Also, just all these fucking rich people. Like, mm-hmm. I just can't. Like, her beach house is Ugh. bigger than any house I've ever lived in. Yeah. It's so pretty. Michael Douglas goes to Gene Triplehorn's office. Uh-huh. And I, so, Gene Triplehorn is like his, uh, what would you call it? Like, it's not an HR thing. What is that? What would this be called? She's a therapist for internal affairs, yeah. right? Right, right. She doesn't work for the police department. Yeah. She's supposed to clear him for duty, basically. Yeah. But, like, they've been banging. Because and- he shot some people. Yeah. yeah, it's like, that's a conflict of interest. Right. Get the fuck out of here. And, like, everyone knows they're fucking. Yeah, like, everyone, everyone knows. Yeah. When, when, they wa- when he walks her out later in the movie and they kiss in the parking lot with all the cops around, I'm like, what the fuck are we doing here? I don't know. Everybody <laughs> seems to have very specific ideas of what you can say and do due to police officers yeah. like the first scene with Sharon Stone ends with her basically just saying like I don't feel like talking to you get the fuck out of here yes. like, you know how you can just do that yeah <laughs> you can just do that I, I you know, listener try telling a cop to just fuck off when they're talking to you see how well that goes for about you about a murder case yeah. yes <laughs> and, and then like like their version of flirty dialogue between uh, Beth and Nick is he tells her he started developing calluses from jerking off. Literally yeah. my next note. Literally my next note. Th- this dude's pickup line is, hey, I've been jerking off a lot. <laughs> question. Mm-hmm. Were the calluses on his hands? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Or... He didn't specify, did he? Ooh. He does hold up his hand and it looks fine. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's, so so it's got to be the other thing. Huh? Yeah. I just, if a guy said that to me, I don't, I, yeah. You throw up in um, your mouth a little bit? A little bit, yeah. And I think I throw up on him. Yeah. What was the term you used last night, Ashley? The attraction disparity between <laughs> Michael Douglas and every woman in this movie? Something like that, yeah. Damn, Ashley got a little scientific on this one. <laughs> it's so unfair. Yeah. Speaking of attraction, I, I, we get introduced to Tobo here, oh Steven Tobolowski, making everything better. Just fucking going for it. <laughs> yes, not enough Tobo. Not enough Tobo. Tobo being very inclusive mm-hmm. in his profiling as well. Someone so obsessed that he or, or she, she. <laughs> the doctor was a woman. Uh, and women, Alfred. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's his medical opinion that the person who committed this murder is dangerous mm-hmm. and doesn't care if people die. Right. Way to go, Doc. I also <laughs> like that he says the most obvious shit, which is, uh, the way I see it, there's only two things. Either A, the person who wrote this book did your murder, uh-huh. or they wanted to frame the uh, the person who wrote this book. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. That, sure. uh, I needed you to tell me that. And there's multiple <laughs> times in the movie where people say almost the exact same dialogue <laughs> revolving around that question Mm -hmm. and i can't tell if it's purposeful or if joe esterhouse just did a you know (laughs) control c control v sure (laughs) i would venture to say that 60 percent of this movie feels like fluff Mm -hmm. yes like filler there are two car chases that amount to nothing in this movie yeah (laughs) and they are fucking bonkers they're terrible they were just like what if this hot woman kills dudes with an ice pick yeah and then they just like tried to go around there. Print yeah. the money now. <laughs> and, and Sharon Stone saying lines like, I like men like that. Men who give me pleasure. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Come on. Cool. Yeah. I don't know. This, this movie is so insane. It's just like. No one says anything. No. Like, yeah. The plot is so convoluted uh-huh. that I've seen it twice now. I still don't fully understand. I don't understand what the fuck is going on with Hazel, her <laughs> older friend that we meet oh, later. Th- yeah, that's a whole subplot that had to have been cut out, right? Because yes. I asked Ashley at one point, are they fucking? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, we were like, are they going to make out? Like, what's happening? I feel like it's safe to so everyone's fucking. Yeah. Everyone is fucking everyone. True. I-, I think the opening scene would work better if we, even though we don't see her face, if it was from like neck down, so we could still see that she had blonde hair, uh-huh. and then that would be more of a red herring, but like, who else would it be? Yeah, am I supposed to think that uh, that's Hazel's ass. Yes, <laughs> Michael Douglas in a wig. Yeah, that I wish. Now that's a movie. That is a movie. Yeah. I think that movie's called uh, Dress to Kill. <laughs> yes, yes. God damn it. Yes, <laughs> I couldn't remember the title. Yeah. All right. We also get introduced to Wayne Knight. Yes. Who again makes everything better and everything he's in. So. Always. Hey, I'll spoil the silver lining early. The motherfucker got cast in Jurassic Park because, because of, of this? this movie. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Steven Spielberg sat through the credits to find out what his name was, <laughs> and he was the first person cast in Jurassic Park. That's so great. The, I I I would give anything to watch Steven Spielberg watch this movie. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> The Fondelmans. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I just want, like, an empty room with him watching it and you sitting in the corner. <laughs> like Adam at the end of The Shape of Things. Uh-huh. He's just playing it over and over again. You just want Steven Spielberg alone in a room. <laughs> 
Um, okay. So we get to the interrogation scene Ugh. and of course the most iconic scene from this movie. And this scene is insane. Yeah. It's a whole group of men. Yep. Like just buckling at the knees. Like there is no sense of prof- Wayne Knight may be the most professional one in the scene. Yes, and he's still but everyone else is like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I was getting angry during this scene. She was. Like it's so ridiculous. Uh-huh. <laughs> Why did they set this scene in like a drama school's cafeteria? It's in Magneto's <laughs> prison from X Men. It, it is. <laughs> it looks like a prison bathroom. Yeah, like it's what is it, the set from Saw? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's like, where should we interview her? How about the most dramatic? lit fucking room in the whole building. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I had the sound effects of like the old school cartoons where like that they would see like, <laughs> like the wolf's eyes yes, popping out and yeah, shit. Just hitting himself in the head with the mallet because that's what <laughs> these people are doing. <laughs> I, I love when she says, have you ever fucked on cocaine, Nick? Uh-huh. And it zooms in on his face like he's about to say, you know I have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like she's got them in the palm of her hand uh-huh. and even to the point where, like, she's trying to light up a cigarette. Wayne Knight's like, "There's no smoking in here." She goes, "What are you gonna do? Arrest me?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yes, do that. Arrest, yes, charge me for smoking." And I was like, "They literally can. Yes, yes. they can." <laughs> but the, I will say, as as bonkers as this scene is, I do think. The sound design and the camera work are really good in this scene and the editing. Well, the, there's weird jumps, like a bunch of time has passed that doesn't feel necessary to me. Sure, sure. I, I, I just mean like there's the lack of sound design is incredible because there's not even room tone in here. Yeah. It's just dialogue and then emptiness. It's- yeah. Unfortunately, the dialogue is stuff like, wait, you can have sex without being in love with somebody? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I like Johnny because he used his hands. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, okay. What, does, does everyone else tie their hands behind their back when they're with you? I don't understand. Great first draft. Yeah, it's like these scenes were written by like a 15-year-old boy. <laughs> I find the most erotic part of a woman is the boobies. Like that's exactly <laughs> what it was. You know how when you touch a woman and it's like a bag of sand? Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, that's a good, yeah, it's a good reference. Thank um, you. The, the, but, but I do like the camera work because I've the unrelenting like whip pans around the men yeah. versus the smooth dollies and push ins on her. I, I, I do like Yon de Bont's work in this. Oh, yeah, she's fully in control the yes. whole time, which I, I do like that. It's just unfortunate that everything everyone's saying is garbage. Yeah, no, the, if you ignore the dialogue and you just like put this on mute and watch it, it works really well. <laughs> yeah, I just imagine you only watch this movie on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to say, like, uh, the leg crossing thing is nuts. Depending on who you ask, not planned. Yeah, uh, it's very strange. Planned and not planned. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's kind of muddled at this point. I mean, I'm obviously inclined to believe Sharon Stone of side course. of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I guess for those who don't know, uh, when they were filming the scene, Paul Verhoeven convinced Sharon Stone. He was like, "Listen, your 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 you know the area of your crotch is going to be in dark. Uh, you won't be able to see anything." Right. And sh- she wore white panties to match her white outfit. And Verhoeven was saying as they were trying to shoot it, "Hey, your underwear is reflecting off the light. Just take them off. Don't worry. You're still in shadow. You're going to be fine." Ugh. And she didn't know. That she was fully exposed until she was at the screening of the movie at the premiere. Right. Awesome. She slapped the shit out of Paul Verhoeven. And, and, <laughs> it's, and a few people have refuted that. Yes, and then she's yes. also said that she thinks that it's exactly what the scene needs. Yes. It's it's really weird. Although I, I still believe that she was just like, I didn't think it was going to be quite that exploitative. Yeah. Yes. It, I didn't think I was going to be that well lit yeah. in that one area. Right. But yeah, she's, she's since come around and kind of been like, you know what? I was angry with him at the time with Paul Verhoeven. Him, but he made the right decision. And I don't think he made the right decision. I yeah, think- <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't say that. Well, that's these are her words, by the way. Right, these right. are her no, words. Absolutely. Sure. Right, so. sure. Like, he made a decision. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. it's sort of like that thing with. Like, you know, Kyle MacLachlan supposedly stormed out of Showgirls saying he thought it was an art film. And I'm just like, <laughs> you just fully did not grasp what was happening around no, you. I feel like no. Sharon Stone's more savvy than that. Yeah. Not everyone's David Lynch, especially not Paul Verhoeven. So. But no, I... I had a fucker in the pool, Coop. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do think for the scene, it makes sense. But yeah, obviously, I would like my actors to be uh, on the same page with their filmmakers with doing things. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's, I mean, that's the one thing people know about this movie. So, like, I don't know. That's it's, the only thing Ashley knew. Yeah, <laughs> right? That's like, all I knew about it. Yeah. yeah. 
you're not the only one. People that haven't seen this movie, they know one thing. Mm-hmm. And it's yep. that Sharon Stone uh, crosses and uncrosses her leg. So. I, I know it's what people remember, but I think the movie would be exactly the same if you didn't have that scene. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, yep. what is that adding to the movie? <laughs> I, I think if they angled it and it was just implied right. and, like, you obviously didn't see the full thing and it was just, like... Uh, from like the I don't know, like the hips up. You know, I think you would get the same effect. Sure, yeah, uh, and that's that's for the audience, I think too, for the men in the audience, because it's just like it just ends up feeling like shock value. It is, it is. It's try hardy, yeah. yeah. And then they cut to the reaction shots of everyone else in the room, and it's Ooh, like that's how you're yeah. supposed to feel. Yeah. 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 Oh my god, it's a vagina. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they just all sell like Star Wars monsters. And because, yeah. and, cool. <laughs> and because and because Sharon Stone's a sociopath. Uh, she beats this lie detector test, which it's entirely possible to do. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, like, I feel like this is just to shut up the naysayers. Yeah, but it was the early 90s. They didn't think it was possible back then. True. Yeah, true audiences true. knew that that was, like, shorthand for, oh, this isn't our guy. Right. You know? yeah. Yes, yes. And that's that's only in service of, to, like, throw you off the scent of the trail, right? Sure. Because there's no other trails to be on. Right. <laughs> And then Michael Douglas goes to Gene Triplehorn's office, <sighs> and this scene is maybe the most uncomfortable thing I've seen s- I hate it. since the scene from the Hills Have Eyes remake. It's terrible. It's awful. Yeah. And it's it's that thing, you know, we were talking about this with 365 Days with, with the uh, the stewardess scene, right? Yeah. Like, this, the movie plays this like he is assaulting her, and then she then rethinks it and is cool with it like it's very weird how this scene plays out it starts off like it's intended to be a hot sex scene sure and then and then she says no, no. Mm-hmm. yeah and it's like oh this got really real real quick yeah like, it's it's rough it's real bad and it's also i mean that's the moment where i like i i lose any kind of rudder in this movie and i'm like who who am i rooting for i yeah. hate everybody right at this point my protagonist i mean he's already been unlikable this sure. just solidified it yeah it just feels so icky because yeah. <laughs> like i don't know the whole like all the sex scenes i think are filmed to like be hot and be erotic yeah. and so the idea that this is filmed in that same yes vein is just really gross he shoots it almost exactly the same as the other sex scenes right the least probable problematic sex scene is the one with the murder the very first one well no no, i was gonna say the first one with with nick and Catherine, where it's like consensual and there's no murder like true that's the closest you get to it in this movie and he is such an asshole because afterwards she says you've never been like that before why and his response is you're the shrink you tell me and oh, i'm like yeah. lady i think i yelled fuck off yeah at the you TV. did you did <laughs> run file your report right away with the with the internal affairs yeah you're, you got him don't worry about that <laughs> run Get, tell mitch Pelegi to pull a gun on him in the office because mm-hmm. <laughs> that happens mm-hmm. yeah he does a desk pop too so <laughs> but it's like it's like because she says like you didn't make love to me and i'm just like okay he spent an afternoon with Catherine, and now he likes to fuck Mm -hmm. and smoke and drink again Uh and now it's so ridiculous that she's just this corrupting influence by proximity his excuse is a woman made me do it like i was off i fell off the wagon because this woman was so hot (laughs) like that's that's the moral of the movie Um, gave into his most basic instincts hey (laughs) there you go there you go oh wrong Uh, wrong sound effect (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's like you had an idea right there. There it is. <laughs> and he's, uh, to, to further solidify the fact that he's the worst detective ever, he cannot tell a car at all. No. He cannot follow, like, cause he, when he tries to follow her and it's so bad. That chase scene, it, it, it like escalates so quickly. Mm-hmm. It's so silly. Mm-hmm. There's no reason for the tension to even exist there. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. And, and as Mally mentioned earlier, horribly edited. Yeah. This, the, 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 the action scene scenes in this movie in general for the most part are not well cut together no and if a if a a potential perp is playing very simple mind games with you and you cannot control your emotions and you're this fucking heated like uh-huh. why are you a cop like, right. you shouldn't be a cop yeah I, everything is not open and closed oh he should absolutely be on like fucking suspension yeah. Yeah. and they tried to suspend him multiple times and nothing bad no negative consequences happened even after he is suspended he is allowed free access to multiple murder scenes uh-huh. his when when <laughs> when what's his name nilson gets murdered later 
he's called to the crime scene just so they can point it out. Right. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so crazy to me. Hey, hey, come here. Look, look at, at this. That, <laughs> look at that guy. Look what you did. They might as well have rubbed Rub his, his nose. nose in the bullet wound. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> but not for nothing. I, I don't think uh, Gene Triplehorn should also be uh, this this therapist. No. Because he really also not. is... Not only fraternizing with uh, the person you are, you know, trying to uh, therapeute, but <laughs> yes. she also can't control her emotions because no. she's just in the office and everything. Just lo- like everyone is so ill-tempered in this movie. Not no one. The maybe the most calm-headed person is Tobo. Well, it was the early nineties. <laughs> That's true. Well, That's true. And, and at this point, we're an hour. We're almost an hour into the movie, and I I thought like. Ashley was like, what's the plot at this mm-hmm. point? And I said, mm-hmm. well, there's been a murder. Maybe someone did it, but who cares? Because there's so much fucking to be done. I forgot about the first murder for a little while. <laughs> no, at one point, at like, at like the 80 minute mark, someone said something about Johnny Boz. And I said, who the fuck is Johnny Boz? Right? Right. <laughs> right. I was like, wait, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. By this point, the plot of the movie is... Is there someone other than Sharon Stone it could have been? Because otherwise, this is open and shut. Right. Like, that's- no, the plot of the movie is, when are they going to fuck? Yeah. yeah. And what will be left of them? <laughs> <laughs> it's, when are they going to fuck? And then it evolves into, okay, now when are they going to arrest her? Now, when are they going to fuck again? <laughs> <laughs> And every conversation is so circular and not in like a compelling way. Mm-hmm. Like every other line is essentially, well, you'd know something about that, wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, like that's that's their idea of like a zinger in this movie. Actually, remind me, what has been Affleck's character name in Gone Girl? Isn't it Nick? Oh, I don't, I don't remember. remember. Oh, she can- actually, I think it is though. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna look it up because I'm I'm just thinking like you'd know something about that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Takes one to know one. <laughs> I know you are, but what am I? Let's fuck. <laughs> I'm just thinking about because like. Michael Douglas in this movie is so easily, like, manipulated and so easily, like, sure. change his whole perspective on things. Like, because he, he starts smoking and drinking again. Uh-huh. And I can't remember who says, are you smoking again? And he says, what are you going to do, arrest me for smoking? Which is the line he heard. Oh, yeah. He just starts adopting her yeah. Yeah, her dialogue. He literally has no brain. He, like, does, he does not it's have in a his brain. Dick. Oh, my God. His name is Nick. Yeah. Is Nick. Ben Affleck's name's car- character's name was Nick. But I feel Nick like- Instinct? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Basic Instinct. That's his full name. <laughs> um, but it's just so pathetic because yeah. it's like this guy- just adapts to what it, it, it is like a like a fifteen year old kid just right. adapting his personality to what he thinks is cool. And it's it's so crazy. And he kisses Gene Triplehorn in front of the police precinct, and I'm like, like we said, like there's no conflict of interest. Right. Really, Doing. Internal Affairs doesn't know about this. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. And he he finds out like he goes he goes to attack Nielsen because he's he thinks IA or he knows IA sold his personal files mm-hmm. to Catherine. Mm-hmm. Oh oh, sorry, we skipped the club scene. I'm oh, sorry. we did. Oh, <laughs> the club okay. scene. I think so. Yeah, which. I'm confused about the club scene. All right, it's like ev- this whole movie is like in shadows. Why is the club the most well lit place in the whole fucking movie? Right. It, <laughs> right? It, it, why does it look like like Punisher War Zone in uh-huh. here? Like, just like uh-huh. the most insane uh-huh. <laughs> like neon lights. This, this club scene is so like it. It's filmed like. You are so euphoric with like horniness that like everything is dreamlike. No, it- it's it's filmed like an episode of Euphoria. Yes. <laughs> and the most unbelievable thing is that someone in their thirties is gonna go out to this, this guy. place late at night. <laughs> uh no, that motherfucker's in his forties. Yes. He was forty seven when they made this movie. But she's in her thir- they say that she's in her thirties. Oh right. Yeah, in one of the interrogation scenes. He sticks out like a dad chaperoning a like a, a field trip. This dude has <laughs> no swag. And I'm just dropping my kids off here for the warp tour right right i'm just keeping an eye on my daughter and it's just <laughs> look at my deep v i'm hip such a deep v <laughs> my granddaughter <laughs> <laughs> if you touch my granddaughter <laughs> <laughs> if you bring my granddaughter to the discotheque <laughs> <laughs> uh but it, it reminded me of the 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 club scene at, from rockstar uh nathan <laughs> right because it's like sure you Put a drug in your mouth. Now you kiss her. Now I'll kiss you. It will be a kissing scene. Like, uh, it's so weird. It's so weird. We were. T- I mean, the the highlight of the scene, though, as Mally mentioned earlier, is Roxy like voguing yes. aggressively uh-huh. so she can keep an eye on Catherine. It's so fucking funny. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Like, is it not meant to be funny? Because nope. it's hilarious. Right. It doesn't seem like it, but it is. It's so funny. Honestly, it made my neck hurt. Yeah. Oh god, it's so good. I, I, I don't think there's any self 
awareness in this. I think this is played fully straight to the T. As much as Paul Verhoeven will like to do things like that, like with Robocop of like, this is clearly supposed to be kind of tongue in cheek or like Star Trek Troopers. This movie has none of that. No. I lied. We didn't skip the club scene. I just had notes about a different weird Roxy moment oh. that I got mixed up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like continue. Sorry. Well, my question is, if this is how Nick is off the booze and drugs, uh-huh. how the fuck has he been allowed to be on the force this long? Right. right. Could you imagine him when, when he was off the wagon before the movie started? This dude must have a body count. Like, how just, does he have like, a job? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Also, nobody looks hot in a bathroom stall. Like, oh that's where God. we see Catherine at the first time, and she, like, s- quote unquote, sexily closes the stall with her shoe. Uh-huh. And I'm just like, that, this is not hot. Yeah. You look like you just got to take a dump, Nick, while you get out. Now, <laughs> now I'm going to have diarrhea, Nick. <laughs> Isn't that a sexy name, Nick? Diarrhea? <laughs> Thanks for meeting me at this 90s Taco Bell. Bro. <laughs> Uh, speaking of gross things, uh, they go to, I think it's Nick's, Nick's apartment here. And guess what? He's using an ice pick again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Nick takes this huge block of ice out <laughs> on this dirty apartment counter. Yes. Right. It just starts stabbing at this fucking block. There's ice everywhere. And I'm everywhere. like, that's going to get my drink. No fucking thank you. What's yep. the point of this? Yeah. No fucking thing. Are you guys aren't ice pick people? Please tell me you're not. No, are we? We're cube people, right? Cube. <laughs> Why would you use an ice pick? That's so silly. I, I don't. I don't know how the ice picks ever became a thing. No. The only time Did they not have cubes in the early nineties. Was it only? Ice <laughs> there was picks? a cube shortage. They were. Uh, they were. They were saving them all for filming the movie Cube. Mm-hmm. Sure. Of co- oh, mm-hmm. of course. <laughs> Great movie. No, the only time I've ever dealt with an ice pick is like working in a restaurant and like the ice maker in the back of house. Sure. Uh, like. That's the little, I've never seen one used in real life. And honestly, if someone just took a chunk of ice out of a freezer and started stabbing it on their counter, I would think they've lost their mind. Yeah. Like, this I would is, leave. Yes. No, thank you. There's no way this is sanitary. I'm, I'm good. They have their their uh, drinks there. He's, yes. He's having a Pepsi or she asked for a Coke. He says, I got a Pepsi. And I'm like, I don't know why that's in the movie. Are you trying to play both fields to maybe you can get product placement from either or? <laughs> right. Like, I don't know. Is Pepsi okay? I think she was asking for cocaine, wasn't she? Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, that might be. You might be right. Yeah, I think she was asking for cocaine. I didn't put it together. Well, she's making a drink oh. and she mentioned, he mentions whiskey. And well, you might be right, though. It might be a double entendre, but I don't know. This is where I noticed that Michael Douglas, the way <laughs> He he tries to exhume sexiness as uh-huh. he just protrudes his bottom lip. Uh-huh. Like almost like caveman, like like instinctual <laughs> uh lizard brain <laughs> kind of mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Like a uh, uh, like that's, that's the sound he makes when they fuck too. Uh-huh. Like he starts <laughs> I wrote down the worst sentence I've ever written for this oh, show. Oh boy. <laughs> when he fucks, Michael Douglas breathes like a truffle hog. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I do remember you saying that. Oh. <laughs> and you're not wrong. I mean, there's there's a bit when she's writing him and he's just like. <laughs> oh, gross. Stop. <laughs> anyway, so isolate that. Put that in the trailer for next season. Uh, Ashley and Nathan, you what? A, yeah. Enjoy your enjoy your 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 intimate time. Later. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. OK. That's a scary movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he, oh, he said oh. the thing. Sorry, Ashley, please continue. <laughs> no, I was just going to say after this, after they have sex, he's like, she's the fuck of the century. Mm. I didn't think it was that exciting. Uh-huh. Like, I don't, it wasn't any, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, from what I remember, it was mostly just Nick going down on her, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Although, the, he's, he is screaming at the end, and I was like, is this the scary blowjob from The Shape of Things? <laughs> Well, well, it's every sex scene in this movie, aside from the one with him and Gene Triplehorn, uh-huh. it's like, and now she's going to murder him. Right. right. They all, they all, they do it twice. They do a fake out twice. It was, it's so crazy. I do, I do think the first one is really like the, the, or maybe it's the, the at the end, it's really well done whenever it looks like she's like lurching forward to yeah. stab him. Yeah. I actually think that's shot really well, but otherwise, yeah. And we are back to actual real nipple in an actor's mouth. I, yes, I hate it. I hate it. And she does it to him. Yeah. She loves the nipple. Yes. Loves it. She's chewing on it. I ah uh, I uh. can't get enough. Uh, and and Nick is into it. Well, that and then he he grips her breast like he's trying to open a jar. Like I <laughs> oh don't my know. god, he's like Kyle Reese in Terminator. He's I was like just twisting about to that say. shit. Like it's so weird. <laughs> I was just about to say he, he somehow his grip is harder than Kyle Reese's. I could not imagine it. I couldn't believe it 
And I will say for all the male gazy like men f- wish fulfillment, at least he does go down on her. So there is something. No, I was I was shocked. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean that's how he got throat cancer, right? Like, that's what I said. <laughs> we were the movie. I think I was like, oh, that's how we did it. That's how it is, right there. Uh, I yeah, it's it's wild. And I read this thing where like Paul Verhoeven was like, I'm not reshooting anything. I'm not cutting anything. Mm-hmm. So he just got a ton of coverage for the sex scene. So that he could just insert different angles yep. if he had to right. to please the MPAA, which is also why this sex scene feels like it's twenty five minutes long. Yes, it's so long. No, the, and these sex scenes are so fucking visceral. Uh-huh. Like if if it came out and they're like, uh, yeah, we tried to fake it, but this is just they're actually having sex. I would believe you. Sure. Like this is borderline, just straight up hardcore porn. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> it's almost like impress. It's, it is impressive of like how they managed to do that without actually doing it. You know what I mean? Like, right. It, I will say the art of the craft of doing it that way it was it's really impressive in this movie. Like of the very few things that I'm like genuinely taken aback by is just how real it looks without being real. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like that's th- fair. Th- if, if only it was in service of like a better script sure. or like or anything. And, and and it's not like they're like in the dark. They're very well lit. The no, camera's yeah. right there. And it's like, how are you faking this? Paul Verhoeven doesn't believe in shooting anything in darkness. Yeah, like it, no. it is no. Yeah. And this is what I wrote down. I was like, the movie the premise of this movie is basically it would be worth it to have sex with Sharon Stone if it meant you could potentially be stabbed to death with an ice pick, right? Um, like that's the premise of the movie. It's like it's worth it. I don't. I don't know about that. I mean, I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm saying that's the premise of the movie. Oh, sure. yes, that is it, the, right? yes, that is the premise of the movie. <laughs> he, I mean, he goes in fully believing she's the murderer, mm-hmm. and he's like, "I still gotta know. Yeah, I still. I gotta, I still I, let me find out. Yeah, I gotta cross all of the uh, borders and all of the boundaries uh, of being a police detective." Sure. To to get it with Sharon Stone, cross the T's and dot the I's, you know. Mm-hmm. And he, but he he does become a new character after this scene too. Dude. Like he wa- <laughs> he's calling Roxy Rocky, and he <laughs> says man to man, and I was like, oh my god, like yeah. And I'm like, this guy's a fucking. He thinks he's a baller. Like yeah. what is happening? And then for some reason, dresses like a cowboy in one scene. Uh-huh. <laughs> I feel, did I miss something? That, why were they dressed like cowboys? It's the same bar. Is it just cowboy night? I have I no idea. On Tuesday. No idea. Yeah. I, I was so Tuesday night cowboy night. <laughs> I I literally paused the movie. I was like, hold the fuck on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why did this become urban cowboy all of a sudden? It cuts to the most uninterested looking line dancers yep. I've ever seen in my life. Yep. Uh, so strange. I do like that Nick is like strutting about after the, the next morning after having sex with her. And then it, like it's cut down yeah. by by Jer Stone. So like, She's like, it was nothing special. Like, yeah. We fucked. It's cool. Like, don't be weird about it. Somehow how even though he just had sex he turns into an incel he's like oh, i thought it was the fuck of the century <laughs> it's right. so gross <laughs> it's so gross no i blew your mind right yeah uh, i rocked your world right i must i'm a marvel <laughs> superhero <laughs> he goes and talks to his partner gus who we haven't talked about too much God. but i love this diner scene because gus is bonkers. like he's like i can't believe how fucking stupid you are <laughs> the wet S- stew eating the, the oh, chili yeah. eating scene. <laughs> oh, it's a lot. Like every couple of seconds, it's like, oh, what kind of fucking sounds do you make when you eat chili, Nathan? <laughs> Not those. I eat chili as quietly as possible. He's, he's like a mouse. <laughs> yeah, I had some turkey chili the other night. I was slurping up a fucking storm. No, Ashley can tell you. I get a, I get a bowl of chili. I say earmuffs. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> yep. I, I just love that Gus doesn't have. Any sense of restaurant decorum? Because he's like, "That's I forgot what Nick says." He goes, "That's your pussy talking, isn't it? Your brain." And then some woman's like, "That lady gets upset and he uh-huh. waggles his tongue at her." Yeah. Uh-huh. It's wild. Gross. Everything is sexualized in this movie. Every single thing, even the fucking chili. Even yeah. the chili. What if he like lead? What if Gus lead down and like was just tonguing the chili out of the bowl like a cat? <laughs> <laughs> Better movie. <laughs> Would that be erotic? Would that would that qualify? Actually, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want to watch that movie now. It's hotter than the interrogation scene. <laughs> I'd watch two hours of that. <laughs> two hours. <laughs> this leads into a, a bafflingly edited uh, chase mm-hmm. slash chicken scene. Yeah, yeah. Nick brushes off being run over by a car pretty damn well. Right? Like, he's, run- he's fine. It's ridiculous. And he goes fucking flying over that car. He rolls over that car. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 
this car chase is so dumb. Uh, apparently, Michael Douglas really did go up the stairs in the car, like practice that. I could do that. <laughs> yeah, you think so? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I could drive badly. Like that's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nathan, you're nuttier than a twenty pound Christmas fruit cake, my friend. Oh, wow. Wow. What? what? Okay. Are you saving that one? It's literally a line in the fucking movie. Oh, is was it? it? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I again, it's so weird that I don't remember bad dialogue. Right. <laughs> oh no, that one stood out to me. Okay. I was like noted that's my new favorite insult what is what is it gus says he's like i'm not gonna let no head up his ass person drive my cadillac car uh-huh. i don't give a flying jelly bean fart <laughs> he makes fun of how small his car is oh, yeah. yeah that's right yeah he emasculates him for, for his car size too love it and you know nick looks good for being ran over by a car and roxy looks pretty great for being in a severe car crash that explodes no bruises no scrapes no blood no nope. there's a perfect corpse like it's it's while <laughs> something about you saying the phrase perfect corpse really creeps me out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perfect corpse yeah. at this point there are so many bodies piling up because of this case uh-huh. i'm like you gotta put nick on leave <laughs> where is any where is any like person in charge here? instead they give him a quick psych evaluation and he like cuts them off and he's just he start he talks a little bit about jerking off mm-hmm. he talks about not looking in the toilet and i'm <laughs> like what if that actually answered their next several questions doesn't mention his calluses once oh, yeah yeah he doesn't mention them at all i, I gotta ask you the, the full house now Do you look in the toilet you guys are looking in the toilet before you flush right oh. No. oh come on man what <laughs> the fuck's the matter with you oh that's too that's taking it too far that's finally crossing the line i finally did it no we're just i i, I won't be giving a statement on this at this time <laughs> 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 all right fair enough i feel Nothing about Catherine being upset that Roxy's dead. Absolutely not. Like when Catherine's crying and she's and she's like, everyone I care about dies. And I'm like, well then stop, stop doing stop killing killing people. them. Yeah. Stop doing what you're doing. Yeah. Stop it. I don't feel anything for any of these characters, unfortunately. <laughs> Maybe my favorite part of the movie is this needless detective scene that Nick does uh-huh. where She's like, oh, there was this person I went to school with, Hoberman, and then he's an idiot and tries to track her down, and she goes, I said Oberman. Yeah. I'm like, what was the point of that? <laughs> right. <What> was <laughs> so <point>? silly. <laughs> and Beth is so scared for people to know that she's bi, mm-hmm. that she like withheld evidence, and in my favorite line of the movie, she says, no, Nick, she's evil. Uh-huh. She's brilliant. <laughs> yes. She's evil. She's brilliant. I, I wanted I wanted Benoit Blanc to come and go, no, it's, it's just, just stupid. <laughs> And then she also says you. she knew that you'd find out who Lisa Hoberman is because you're a good cop. And I'm like, no, no he's, he's not. not. He's super not. <laughs> no, he's not. No, he's not. And sh- and I feel like she, of all people, would know that. Mm-hmm. Right. And he gets uh, he gets his information because he goes and visits John Strode from Halloween 6 in evidence. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> Boom. Connection. For some reason, they have to go investigate an office and Gus yeah, I is- don't. I don't understand. There's so many weird little things that I feel like aren't explained properly. Properly, mm-hmm. like Johnny Boz's connection with the mayor, mm-hmm. uh, the 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 fact that he's gonna go meet someone who claims to be Catherine's old roommate mm-hmm. at this office. Is that what it is? Yep. And then there's for, there's something about a missing thread of like fifty thousand dollars that was not touched. Oh yeah, I did. I could not follow that at all. No clue. Wait, I fucking completely missed that. Right? What? It's it's one phone call and like Gus picks Nick up and then tells him like, well, you can't come inside. Yeah. <laughs> like wait out here. Yeah. And I don't know how he puts it together that Gus is going to be attacked. He looks up at the, I don't see anything in the window. No. Right. Like we, re- we rewound it. We're like, what, what was did- he looking at? I did too. I did too. It's just a shot of the building. Yeah. He looks at the building and then just goes, Gus! Yes. <laughs> As if Gus could hear him. But unfortunately, Gus is killed by Ghostface. He, oh my God. So is. So is. Honestly, it's kind of on Gene Triplehorn for getting shot here. <laughs> Jesus. If someone has a gun on you, don't stick your hand in your pocket. That that and if they say stop moving and take your hand out of your pocket, just fucking do it. Yes. Especially if you've only got a Bart Simpson keychain. If she's not the killer, she acts absurdly calm Red. during this confrontation. She sure yeah. does. And then what's her final line? I always loved you or whatever. I get, love the, you. get the fuck out of here. I get know. the fuck right me, out of this movie. It made me angry. <laughs> so yeah, I don't understand any of the the convoluted backstory. I don't understand any of the connections these people have i don't know why it's so complicated yeah i've seen it twice now and i still can't put it together well and it's meant to be ambiguous because you're supposed to wonder 
was Gene Triplehorn the one who was obsessed with Sharon Stone, mm-hmm. or was it the other way around? Mm-hmm. Does it even matter? No. Or are we just throwing another blonde herring at the screen? Yeah. Like, what's happening here? And with this ending, they try to give you little breadcrumbs to throw you off. Yes. Like, because when he first goes, when Nick first goes to Gene Triplehorn's apartment, he says, oh, I walked right in, your door was unlocked. She goes, yeah, I need to get it fixed. And that sets up perfectly with the end of this, like, the, the red herring at the end of this movie, too. Mm-hmm. Right, because there's all this evidence in her apartment now yes that everyone's handling with their bare hands yep Yep. the worst detective work i think i've ever seen in a movie Uh it's awful so i'll recap the ending here uh everything gets pinned on jane triplehorn uh they find Catherine's book in her apartment they find a gun yeah apparently she says to nick before he kills her that gus called and left an answer machine message for her to come meet him at that location there's no message. There's a brand new tape in the answering machine. And it's just everything just gets pinned on Beth. Uh-huh. And there's even a bunch of like newspaper clippings. We do the fucking Pepe Silva thing with <laughs> Catherine. Right. Yeah, they both kind of pitch this idea of, oh, she was obsessed with me. No, she was obsessed with me. Right. And I'm way more interested in the single white female movie that right? played out years before this movie. Oh, my God. That would right? have been a better movie. <laughs> right. And and but every woman in this movie has to be bisexual to amp up the steaminess. So of course they had a relationship at one point, or they experimented, as Beth says, uh-huh. because this movie was written by a group of fifteen-year-old boys. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. If you put a bunch of fifteen-year-old boys in a room with a typewriter, eventually they'll write Basic Instinct. Eventually, <laughs> eventually. And then Nick and Catherine get together once again. Uh-huh. They talk about what's the future going to hold. Nick pitches the idea of having kids. Fuck like minx. Fuck like minx and have some little rugrats, he says. Have some rugrats, live happily ever after. Gross. And she goes, uh, I don't want no fucking kids. <laughs> and then they go back to having sex. It's, it seems like she may be going to, like, about to stab him. And then, nope, they're just having sex. Tilt down to an ice pick under the bed. Cut to black. Which is only, the, like, not every murder was an ice pick. Right. So, like, that's just for the audience to be like, oh, someone else was killed with one of those. <laughs> mm-hmm. This ending, I don't know. I <laughs> It's not the, like, bombshell that I think the movie thinks it is. No, because we saw her do it in the first scene. Right. Yeah. And I think there's things there that are implied to, like, make you think that and they're ambiguous, but I don't think they are. Like, I think the movie is trying to, like, pitch the idea of, like, maybe Beth was actually crazy. And I'm like, no, I don't think she was. Yeah. I think the only villain of this movie besides Nick is Catherine. There are reads of this movie that there are multiple murderers, but I don't think the movie's that smart. Yeah. I think the movie I think the movie is playing at being smart. Yes, it's it thinks it's smart, but it's not. But we're very aware of who the killer is from the very beginning. Like yeah. I said, it's like a Columbo episode. Yeah. <laughs> like, Just one more thing. Uh what's up with that ice pick under the bed? You know, I couldn't help but notice you said no to Pepsi earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so I I found this this brief little sentence here on on reddit about this movie that i thought was interesting to talk about real quick uh-huh. sorry i don't have the users the user's name here to credit them but they said in the end Catherine only spares nick because he's happy to fall in the role of a boy toy because she reaches for the ice pick when he starts talking about having a family huh. and gearing their re- relationship towards more traditional roles and she asks him what if i don't want to have children he immediately recants his idea of having them Uh she saves his life for the moment yeah this is a relationship that's doomed to fail obviously (laughs) because it's two toxic people together sure i want to know like what happens after this movie do you think she eventually just kills him what does hazel think what yeah (laughs) i want do you think there was a sex scene with hazel that got cut out do you think probably her and gus oh that would be Uh, great uh, their celebrity name would be guzzle (laughs) oh (laughs) my god That's fantastic. <laughs> but no, I mean, like, she can't kill him then, right? Because it's there is no possible way anyone else did it, right? Right. Like, she, if, she, if she does eventually kill Nick, the game the game is over. Right. Well, luckily, it took 14 years for the sequel to come out, and now Catherine's living in England, so they don't even have to address it. Yeah. And I, I, I haven't seen it. Probably never will. I <laughs> wouldn't recommend it. I don't think I'll see it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. I guess that'll lead me into this question. Do we recommend Basic Instinct? Absolutely not. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I think you can skip it. Fair enough. I I, I don't know. Like, it's... There's there's a little bit of like camp value to be found here, but I think m- most of it is just it's int- it feels so long, and it's not especially kind to women, no. to queer people, to mentally ill people. Oh, <laughs> like, uh-huh. And a lot of that is a lot of that is a, a, a you know because of the times or whatever. But it's just there's there's more fun erotic thrillers out there. Sure, that's exactly what I was about to say. There are better erotic thrillers to go watch. Yeah, Mally. What the fucking course not. <laughs> 
right. I, I'll be, you know, the devil's advocate and say, I do recommend it just because I think it's so stupid. That's a great example. The devil's advocate, a way better erotic thriller to watch than this. <laughs> I, I just think it's so stupid, but it's also so well made in that aura of dumbness. Like, sure. it's, I don't think you can watch this movie seriously and take it and try to meet it on the level it thinks it's at. Not at all. Just watch it and know it's just dumb, goofy, stupid fun. And I, don't, I, I think Paul Verhoeven is good at doing what he does. Yeah. But, but even he doesn't make them like this no more. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, there is a, a, a feeling to... Well, Benedetta uh, had some... I have not seen that yet. It's got some interesting stuff in it. I'll say that. Okay. <laughs> One one scene in a bathroom area that uh, I will not soon forget. Um, but I don't know. I, I mean, if you're watching this movie just because you think it's like if you've heard it's hot and erotic, I mean, you might as well just watch porn, I guess. <laughs> sure. Or if Fatal Attraction's got similar vibes to it and it's not nearly as as gross. Right. Although it is still pretty gross. And I think Roger Ebert said it best. He said, this film is like a crossword puzzle. It keeps your interest until you solve it. And then it's just a worthless scrap with the spaces filled. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. That's so good. I think that's brilliant. That's I really good. I will watch this movie again just because, again, I have fun with it. Uh-huh. I think it's a fun group watch just to make fun of it and laugh at it. But a group? What group are you watching this with? <laughs> Him and his left and right hands. Hey, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I just I think it's fun. I think it'd be a fun group watch just to laugh at it. Okay. This does not hold a fucking candle to knock knock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which I still haven't seen. <laughs> Uh, anything else before we get into prop cop? I think we nailed it. Yeah. Oh, uh, one other thing is that uh, Catherine Tramell is basically uh, Joan Cusack's character in Adam's Family Values. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, let's get into prop cop. Uh, and Prop Cop for New Listeners is where we look at all the props in Basic Instinct and we each take one for ourselves. Uh-huh. How about we start with you, Ashley, since you're our guest? Um, I want the sunglasses that the evidence cop was wearing. Fuck! The <laughs> comp finder glasses? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those are great. Those are great. Yeah. Well, if you want those, I also want all the house plants at uh, her beach house. Sure. sure. No, no I'll, I'll let you have the comp finder glasses. That's okay. <laughs> that, that, that was that guy's job title, right? Comp finder. Yeah. yeah, I want the comp finder glasses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, instead of DR, it's a CF, uh, and then his name. Nathan, what about you? What prop do you want? I went with a really obvious one. I want the Bart Simpson keychain. Nice. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Mally? Um, I'll take the polygraph machine. Sure. <laughs> um, you know, that'd be fun to bust out at a party. Of sure. course, of course. Uh, I just went with the, the classic. I went with the ice pick. Nice. Sure. I mean, if you're going to take anything from the movie, might as well take the, the, the MacGuffin of the movie, basically, the big old ice pick. Right. Uh, and then I would never actually use it to pick ice because it's fucking gross. <laughs> well, what about bit part? That is, of course, where we look at all of the minor roles in the movie, all the extras, the featured extras, yeah. and we uh, cast them as ourselves to build up our filmography. Uh, I'm going to go first. I want to be that cop that uses the cum finder glasses. <laughs> uh, Mally, what about you? What's your bit part? I just want to be one of the diner patrons. <laughs> uh, I'd kill for a fucking omelet right now. Sure. <laughs> Do you want to be the woman that Gus does his uh, little tongue waggle to? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Now, Nathan, what about you? Uh, Ashley and I had a shared uh, bit part. Oh, yeah. a couple's bit part? Uh-huh. Yeah. Like you can't be Michael Douglas and Sharon Stone. <laughs> 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 Nor would I want to be. Um, at one point, Michael Douglas is walking down the stairwell in the police department, and there's a <laughs> cop leaning against a wall chatting up an, a lady cop. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and they're, like, really close, and she does not look totally comfortable with it. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I like that idea. That's us. Yeah, that's, that, us. that's us. I like that idea. All right. My backup was going to be the guy in the men's bathroom stall at the club with Roxy and Catherine. <laughs> sure. He's just, he just stands there while they make out. I thought that'd be pretty funny. <sighs> Well, the whole reason we do this show, as I mentioned before, is we like to find the silver lining for our characters here at the end. So why don't we do that right now? Uh, and I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Yeah. I think Nick and Catherine, as I mentioned earlier, are kind of made for each other. <laughs> and I think he is going to get his. Mm. One way or another, he's either going to find himself on the receiving end of an ice pick or uh, at least, you know. Some pussy. <laughs> 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 and even if that doesn't happen, at least they are paired off so she doesn't have to do this with more people. Mm. Like, she kind of 
There's less risk of her just murdering other people. Her and Nick, who are terrible people, are now together. <laughs> right. So that's that's what I came up with. Um, Nathan, what about you? Mine was a little more unambiguous. Okay. Uh, Nick's probably dead now. Okay. Like that just, that's, that's fair enough. That just feels good to me. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, Ashley, what about you? Um, I went with that uh, that cop couple in the hallway probably hooked up later. Aww, <laughs> so sweet. Uh, Mally? Uh, right there at the end, I mean, Nick found a parking spot <laughs> right outside his apartment. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so true. <laughs> That is maybe the most. You know how fucking hard that is. That is maybe the most innocuous silver lining we've ever had on the show. I Holy really shit! Love that though. Bravo! That really I'm kind good. of I'm kind of impressed. Bravo! That was really good. Bravo! All right. Well, like we mentioned, basic instinct ends on a cliffhanger. Sure. Uh, there's no resolution really there. So, and even if there is, the resolution is, hey, sh- Catherine fucking did it, uh-huh. which is not surprising at all. But. Uh, we like to offer uh, alternative movies on our show that you double feature with the episode of the week. So what's a movie people can watch after they watch Basic Instinct? I'll, I'll go ahead and give you mine. I went with another Michael Douglas movie, which almost feels like a continuation of this horrible character. And you get to see him get his in this movie. I'm going to go with Falling Down. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Nice. I love Falling Down. It's actually a fun watch, much like... I think this movie can be if you're in the mood for it. But yeah. Falling Down, I watched for the first time last year. Yeah. I could not believe it took me so long to watch it. It's a fun movie. It's so... Maybe maybe Schumacher's best movie? Yes. Ooh. Like, it's up there. Yeah. No, I think I think you might be right. It's so... It's really good. What about you, Mally? What you got? Uh, You know, Knives Out, Glass Onion, fucking Clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just better mystery movies. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. Just any movie that's not this one. Sure. Love it. Nathan? I, I'm i worried I might have stolen Ashley's, oh, but wow. I went with uh, a movie from this creative team that is probably grosser, but a little more aware of what it is. I went with Showgirls. All right. No, I knew you were going to go with that one, so I picked a different one. Okay. <laughs> what you got? Um, I went with another movie that spotlights basic instincts and where life finds a way. Jurassic Park. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> nice. I like that. And also, I think that maybe the second time Showgirls has made an appearance this season alone is our pick-me-up. Oh, really? Because I recommended it earlier this season. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Oh, wow. That's right. Uh, okay, well, is there anything left to say about Basic Instinct, or have we said all we're going to say? Absolutely not. All right. There's just, there's come all over <laughs> this this place. Yeah, we got to do some cleaning up after this episode. I'm sorry. Man, lots of sexualized movies this season. X, 365 Days, this. Are you guys okay? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, Ashley, thank you so much for coming on and giving us a woman's perspective yet again. Thanks for having me. I can't believe we keep picking movies like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, But no, this was fantastic. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Thank you. Well, listener, if you have feedback for us about the show or you want to give us your thoughts about the movie Basic Instinct, you can by emailing us at the playlist at gmail.com uh, or you can DM us on Instagram. Instagram or Twitter. If you've got a suggestion for a movie you think we should cover on the show, you can do it there. And you can also do it on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. And if you haven't already, give us a follow on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok where we post clips from the show, sometimes some behind the scenes stuff, sometimes some uh, accoutrements, <laughs> some uh, compendiums to things that we've done on the show. Yeah. Other big words. Uh-huh. And yeah, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, rate, all of that good stuff and tell your friends and family about the show. Now, <clears throat> that's all for Basic Instinct. You never have to watch this movie again, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Next week is Mally's pick. That's yeah. Right. And I am very excited because I know what we're going to talk about. But why don't you give the audience a clue for what that episode is going to be? You know, uh, be careful where you put your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> That could have been a clue for this movie, too. I was just about to say, I think that's good advice for this movie as well. That's just good life advice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's going to be a fun episode. So until next week, where we're talking about fingers and where not to put them, uh, rest in peace, Oatmeal and Beth. And Johnny Boz. (laughs) And Gus. Who the fuck is Johnny Boz? (laughs) Who the fuck is Mark? And uh, as always, I don't give a flying jelly bean fart. I'm the fuck of the century. (laughs) (laughs) Excelsior. 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 Look it up.
Hello YouTube! If you've made it this far, thanks! Could you do us one more favor? Could you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show. We'd really appreciate it. Join us again next week for an all new episode. Bye!